Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mary, and thank you, Jill. Um, so it's so nice to see so many people out here this morning. I, uh, I have to tell you that um, I wrote my speech three times, and this morning during adoration, instead of praying, I was re-editing again. <laughs> so I think I'm going to put this away and kind of wing it. So um, I uh, ran for the school board for the first time in 2001. And unlike a lot of people that have run for school board, I thought I really knew what I was getting myself into. And uh, that was because I had served on the school board in Schuyler County from 1978 until 1980, when my husband Bill and I moved back to Marshall with our three kids. Since that time, my children have grown. They all graduated from Marshall High School. They've all gone to college. And I have eight wonderful grandkids, three of whom have graduated from Marshall High School, and two, well, one has graduated, one will graduate, and the other one is still thinking, so. <laughs> um, but, uh, during the campaign, um, I, would, I kind of thought maybe it'd be interesting. I went back and found an old newspaper that my husband, who's the pack rat in the family, of course, that um, says, uh, this is April 4th, 2001, during the campaign, Green said that if elected, her priorities would be working toward a new elementary building, renewing the public's confidence in the school board, and working to ensure that the district offers the best education possible for our kids. I am a very, very positive person when it comes to the, ed the education that your children receive here in Marshall. We have the most wonderful staff. We have great administrators, and I really think over the years, we have had wonderful boards. Now, one would think that I would be prepared for just anything that was thrown at me after serving on a board previously, but um, accountability was the buzzword at the moment, and of course, we were accountable, but each school district was its own little person, its own little thing. You know, it lived in a world all of its own, and God forbid we compare ourselves to anybody else. But then No Child Left Behind came along, and it left everybody behind. And when people say that the school ranks way down at the bottom of the school listing on um, DESE, please remember that these are scores from No Child Left Behind, Folks, we are on the moon, we are rising. Our kids are becoming stars in their own right. Money, money is always a big issue. Jim's gonna talk to you in a few minutes about please giving us back 31 cents the state took away from us last year. And that 31 cents will start helping us to bring salaries up to stuff when it comes to being comparative to other districts around us. And I, I, 31 cents doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it would mean a whole lot to the school district. And it would be the first time that you have given us a new levy in, well, Jim will tell you in a few minutes, okay. Um, but I, the, the biggest thing, I think, besides the bond issue, which is also in this paper, um, that's how far back we've been voting, um, that is that people don't trust the Board of Education. Um, I, I don't quite understand that because the board has changed uh, for every year, almost. I mean, we've hardly ever had a time when we don't have a new board member. So what you think happened back in 1998 no longer applies to a school board these days. You have to be savvy about finance, you have to know a kajillion acronyms and what they all mean. And you have to be willing to put yourself out there for the people to take pot shots at. Um, my family asked me when I said I was running again if I had written across my forehead. And I said, no, I am not, not in any way. I am just a huge advocate for education and we have a tremendous amount of that going on in our schools this year. So this morning, I stand here before you and ask 
that you allow me to serve the children. And that's what it's all about. Okay, she says, cut it off. Okay. <laughs> um, that there's a whole lot more to educating a child than hiring a teacher. There are hard decisions to be made, and most likely, most will be unpopular. But if you really want to know what is going on in your school district, I challenge you, all of you, to come to our board meetings and get involved in the school district. There is more to see on the inside than on the outside. And as Dr. Mayor says, we do happy in Marshall. So come and help make Marshall School District a benchmark district. Hang on a second. <laughs> A benchmark district that others look to for best practices and why we are all doing happy in Marshall, Missouri. Coming this morning, I know it's hard to get up. Uh, what I'm doing right now is probably the hardest thing that I do. I'm not used to standing in front of people talking, uh, but uh, I'm gonna give it my best shot. Uh, <clears throat> I moved to Marshall in 1968. I married Debbie Egan from Old Bend, and we had four children. And all four of the children, of course, graduated from Marshall High School. And right now we have 10 grandkids between those four children. They all live here in Marshall, all my family does. And uh, my two sons, Stephen and Mike, work in my company, Marshall Electrical Contracting. And hopefully, I'm almost positive, they'll carry on the tradition of the company that we started back in, that I started back in 1976. Uh, my daughter, Angela, is a uh, She's a nurse in our end out at Fitzgibbon Hospital. I'm very proud of her and her job. My daughter, Stacy, is actually a teacher at Southeast. She taught for several years in Slater and did get in, uh, in the Marshall School District. She's very happy about that. When I ran for uh, the school board uh, six years ago, this would be my third try to get elected. Uh, some of the things that I wanted was I wanted our great schools put back to mobile up schools. I thought that one of the biggest problems we had in Marshall with our test scores and everything was that our children had a transition every year until they got to the middle school. Well, when you have transitions, you don't, you just lose things. And in the past couple of years, that's happened. One of the other things that we are putting them back together, we have our great schools, there are two grades in each grade school now. Hopefully, with some of the changes, we'll be able to get even fewer transitions. It kind of depends on a lot of what things happen out of the HAP Center and, and things like that. Uh, one of the other things is that I heard for years and years that our buildings are falling down, the roofs are leaking, we need a new building. Well, you know, if you take care of things and spend money on them, I live in a house that's built 1928. My roof doesn't leak and it's not falling down. Uh, but that being said, we are spending money on the house. We're spending probably this summer, we'll spend a million dollars on this. Buildings. You don't hear that anymore. That does not come out of anybody from the Board of Education right now. Do we need more money? Well, of course we do. We're, we're sunk. Uh, we got, uh, well, our money went from $3.12 down to $2.75 just this past year. We do need more money. I mean, I'd love to pay our teachers and our, our other staff a better salary, you know, to, compared to the other towns. And so that's why you'll hear pretty soon about that. Uh, I just, you know, I'm very interested in Marshall. I got involved in politics. Uh, my first uh, dip into that was A.C. Lasher back years ago. He was the uh, city inspector. Of course, I had electrical contracting business. And he said, well, if you want to make things change, Mike, run for an office and make that change. Well, I ran for it. Ran. Unfortunately, I ran against Tom Marshall and got beaten by about 16 votes. And but later that year, Tom went on to be a representative for the state. And they appointed me to the school board, I was, or not to the school board, pardon me, to the city council, I was 29 years old, so I've been doing something for the city marshal since I was 29. I don't think there's been two years that I haven't been involved in some type of committee council. Uh, I, I'm not going to bore everybody with what I've done. But I can say this is the hardest thing I can do. If you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, I'll tell you a lot of stuff. But um, very, very proud of our administrator we've got there. and uh, Carol Mayer, she's doing a wonderful job. I see things happening in the school board now that, that I would have loved to see six years ago. Probably wouldn't have ran for school board six years ago if this would have done. If, it, if we would have had the culture we've got today in Marshall Public Schools. And, uh, but when you want to change things, the only thing you can do is put yourself into, into a position to change it. So 
and that's what I've tried, and that's what I will commit to do for another three years. Uh, this board is actually the hardest and the most challenging board that I've ever been on. Uh, you think you have money and you think you can spend it there? Well, nope, you can't do it. Uh, when there's other avenues of, like, for instance, the city, you can pass a half cent sales tax, you can use that money to tear down houses. No one better school board do that. The only money we have is what the state and the federal government gives us, and they never, ever funded it 100%. And the other money that we get is the money that we ask from our taxpayers to, to help our children on, you know, locally. And, and that's why that we're going back to ask for local money that we got taken away because uh, the pipeline went through. There's a law in the area that when you get extra money, you have to roll back your taxes to cover that because they're not going to give you any extra money next year. So we all live within our means. We, uh, we do have reserves. And I'm done. <laughs> There's my five minutes. Okay. Thank you guys very much. Hi, uh, I'm Paul Edward Harper Jr. Most of you people know me by Ed or Eddie. And the reason being I go by that is my grandfather was Paul, my dad was Paul, my sister was Paul. Love. And I was Paul, so you can imagine going to a picnic or someone calling Paul, everybody comes running. So I usually, I just go by that. Uh, I was born and raised in this community. I was born here in 1962 at the old Fitzgibbon Hospital. Um, I graduated high school here in 1980. During high school, I uh, saw Coach White back there as a wrestler and did very well. Uh, I joined the U.S. Army at 17 and I was gone from this community for 22 years. Of that 22 years, 20 years plus, I was a non-commissioned officer in the United States Army. And those of you who ever served in the military, you know that once you're an NCO, you're always in charge. You're never not in charge. So I do have leadership skills. While I was in the Army, I taught school, uh, recruiting and retention school down at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. I did that for three years. And I actually got selected uh, the top 5% of the recruiting command to go do that. So. Um, while I was there, I had accomplished a BA in Sociology through Coker College in South Hartsville, South Carolina. This is why I was in the military. I would uh, go to a class after uh, work, usually at about 4.30 in the afternoon, and I obtained my BA from nothing to a BA degree, walking across the stage, getting my degree in two and a half years. Um, I did retire from the United States Army in 2002. Um, I've been all over the United States. I've heard one of the candidates there while well, I lived here, there, and there. While well, I lived in Europe, I've lived all over the South, the East, uh, Pennsylvania, to Texas, to Kansas, everywhere. But you know, when I retired from the United States Army, I wanted to come home. During the years I was gone, it's like, you know, Marshall's my home. And I will be here probably till the day I die. Because you know what? Um, I feel it's my duty to to run for the school board. I also uh, I'm a member of the Marshall McSonny's uh, Lodge and I'm the vice president of the Marshall Alumni Wrestling Club here in Marshall. And we support the high school, the uh, grade school, and the uh, little ones in the wrestling. Um, I work at the Marshall Fire Department. In fact, I had to get you know, I was on duty till 7 o'clock. My boss let me off 15 minutes early so I could come here. And I work for the school district. So I'm the only candidate that if I get elected that will take a pay cut because I work for the school district. And you know, I've heard, well, you know, if he gets elected, he's going to have to resign. You know what? Don't care. That's just the way it is because, you know, I feel so strong about running for the school board and trying to make a change. I have been told, well, you know, there's not much one person can do. See, I don't believe that. I think if one person can convince others then we can get something done. You know, in the past, you know, they don't, uh, um, I've heard candidates say, well, we don't, uh, no one trusts the school board. Well, you know what, I don't know about that. It's the people. It isn't, it isn't the school board, I think it's the individual people. And me, I would do my darndest to, uh, to do the best job I can do. Because you know what, anything I do, I give 110%. I, I don't care. I mean, I would work through lunch. I, I do all kinds of things. I do not stop until that task is accomplished. And I'm going to tell you something. You don't have to tell me more than once. 
Ask any one of them that, that I work for. The chief is right there. Ask them. And you can ask the school. If they tell me to do one thing, they better hurry up and tell me to stop because I'm already going out the door and getting that task accomplished. And I do not believe in failure. I don't reward failure in the military. I never did. And I've never failed in my life. Of course, this is the first time I've run for office, but you know what? If I get it, I will do the best job I can do. And thank you for being here today.